Today Garmin announced two new updates to their cycling GPS range. The Garmin Edge 1030 Plus and at the other end of the scale, the Garmin Edge 130 Plus. Now given all the things these units can do, which is a hell of a lot, I'm not going to be covering an A to Z of feature sets. What I've done is picked out the updates and things that I find interesting with these new releases. Starting off with the flagship product, the 1030 Plus. Now with the release of the 530 and the 830 units last year, the original 1030 became a little aged. This was released three years ago, back in 2017. Now recent firmware updates have brought this unit up to spec software wise with the new offerings from Garmin, but this was a little laggy. Today, the 1030 Plus brings it up to speed with the new hardware. So what's changed with the 1030 Plus? Well, physical form factor is all about the same. It is all black. The original unit had the white band around it. There was a Bontrager version of the 1030, which was all black, but 1030 plus that's the only option you have to go with weight wise it comes in at an extra gram heavier than the previous version weighing in on the scales here in the llama lab at 125 grams a key component that has been upgraded in the 1030 plus is the processor which you can't see but you can definitely experience the speed uh, it has been updated for faster device responsiveness faster route calculation faster route recalculation speeds which is a good thing if you're off track on a route and you want to know very quickly how to get back on track or how to reroute, it'll do it a lot faster on this unit. And with the improved efficiency, Garmin say it's a major contributor to better battery life on the 1030 Plus. Now, speaking of the battery life, they claim a 24 hour battery life on this as opposed to a 20 hour battery life on this using the same measurement specs. Battery can be difficult to measure because it depends on the usage, how many sensors you have paired and all the features you're using. So one for one though, they're saying the new unit lasts four hours longer, happy days. To put the new processing speeds to the test, I loaded up this little utility here called Tree Benchmark, which will run a few fractal things on the head units and come back with a number. The higher the number, the better. Now the processor on the 530 and the 8 830, which is now the same as what's in the 1030 plus comes back with a number of around 23 to 23 and a half thousand running the same test on the old 1030 comes back with around 10,000 so Garmin's claims of the CPU being twice as fast if not better yep that confirmed it today other things of note here for the new Edge 1030 Plus is there is no SD card slot on the back. To make up for that, they've doubled the internal capacity up to 32 gig, and with that extra space, they've given everybody worldwide maps. So no purchases required to get other maps on here. That's all managed via Garmin Express. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Another thing that I found with the 1030 Plus is the beeper has a lot more punch to it. It's a lot easier to hear outside, and the speaker has been moved from down around here on this unit to up the top there, so you can hear it a lot better out on the road. Screen updates, are uh, very similar screen. It is a little washed out compared to the 530 and the 830. Outside in the sun though, easy to read, still works. Um, very similar side by side to the original, but it does feel a lot more responsive. And Garmin do tell me they have addressed the issues with UV uh, causing the halo effect on these older units. Okay, so more of the mapping. When you purchase these units, depending on the region that you purchase, will depend which maps that you get in pre-installed. So North America, you get North America and European maps. In Europe, you'll get North America and European maps pre-installed. Australia, we get Australia, New Zealand and European maps. And in South America, that includes North America and South American maps. Now, that's the pre-installed ones. You can jump over to Garmin Express with a cable, plug it in and select the maps that you want. So if you're going traveling, you don't need to purchase any more maps or you don't need to jump over to OpenStreetMaps do a hack download and select the regions you want and then load them onto the unit. Now that's all gone. Global maps are really a thing. Garmin say the courses and routes created on the device can use trend line popularity routing. I put that to the test this week, 16 kilometers from home with a straight road between myself and home and a slight right turn. This unit redirected me around the scenic route around the lake where everybody rides. So that was a welcome update to this unit and it jumped me onto a small trail that linked two roads together, which is also where everyone rides, not the main road. So the onboard routing on this, thumbs up from me so far. Uh, reroute, there are a few options added to this unit. You have the ability to go back to where you left the course. If you're off course, you can skip ahead and you can cut across. Now those things will pop up super fast on this with the higher processing speed, but there are a whole video themselves to do on that. So maybe stay tuned for how that all works. Another feature landing today with the 1030 Plus is the daily suggested workout. So if you have all your PhysioTrop synced between all your Garmin devices, or if you just have one Garmin device with everything in the cloud there with Garmin Connect, turn this on, it'll tell you what workout you should be doing based on your training load and your VO2. Is it the best training around? Maybe not, but it is a serving suggestion if you're lost of what to do out on the road or indoors. 
Uh, next up for the mountain bikers, the Edge 1030 Plus comes preloaded with trail forks and also has fork sight for trail identification. So if you come to a trailhead, there's three options. It'll pop up and tell you which way to go. This unit now also supports easy setup, which will grab your previous Edge configurations, if you have previous Edge configurations up in the Garmin Connect Cloud associated with your account. And when you set everything up, it should pull those profiles down. If you don't have anything there, it'll look at the sensors and the activity types that you do and give you a most used profile setup. So Garmin moving towards more of a fast paced setup rather than having to set everything up from scratch every single time. Also very handy if you have to reset everything after a firmware update. Uh, LiveTrack can also be started from the unit itself, which I think is a super cool feature. You can enable it on the fly. So if you're out for a ride, you forgot to enable LiveTrack, scroll down, hit the button, LiveTrack starts, and you can share those out as per LiveTrack settings. That's a video in itself. Stay tuned for that one. Uh, pricing wise, $599.99 for the unit, so nothing changes there. And there's a bundle option, which includes speed and cadence sensor and a heart rate jewel for $699.99 US dollars. Now over to the smaller, cuter baby Yoda of GPS units from Garmin. Yes, it is absolutely tiny, this unit. There are a few limitations with this, but it is super, super cute. Uh, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no full power metrics saved on here. It's a monochrome screen, but it does get a few updates. The one notable one is the update to the battery. Well, the claimed battery life. They're claiming 12 hours of this unit. Now, the previous unit was claimed 15 hours. I don't think many people got 15 hours out of this unit uh, and there's a lot of threads online about people being unhappy with the battery performance. I think this is just a realignment of the communication about the battery capabilities of this unit, being 12 hours while using GPS and 10 hours while using two sensors. I'm not sure whether that's two sensors and GPS, but look, you're not gonna get a lot of battery life out of this little thing here. One thing I did notice for the 130 plus is the battery status is now in percentage, not in little bars, which were a little confusing, so you can keep a closer eye on the battery status. Weight, exactly the same, 33 grams. This unit now has uh, training and workouts and it has Climb Pro, which is so cute when it pops up on screen. Doesn't make the climbs any easier though. Uh, this unit now has an accelerometer, so the mountain bike people can go full send with this, with metrics, and it has incident detection. Live track can also be started from the unit, just like the 1030 Plus. Pricing wise, remains the same, $199.99 US, and as a bundle, which includes a heart rate strap as well for $249.99 US. And today's bonus round, Garmin have released a new time trial mount for TT bikes. Now, this doesn't require you to do the quarter turn because most of the time with the two TT bars nice and close together, you can't get it in and switch it. The bracket actually locks it in from underneath. Handy little tool, I'll do a whole video on this and another mount that I have in the near future, but just a heads up, they have released a new TT mount for their units today. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, if I was to cover all the feature sets of this and this, we'd be here for many, many weeks. So today, just a summary of what these new updates are all about. If there's anything you'd like more information on or me to go through, hit the comments below and I'll add it to the list of things to cover in future videos. If you wanna hang around, I'll do a quick side-by-side -side between the newer 1030 Plus and the older 1030 so we can get some hands-on about how responsive that new screen and processor really is. Okay, some head-to-head -head with the 1030 and 1030 Plus. Starting with the power on. And we have a clear winner here. You're still coming to the party. And there we go. Okay. First thing that pops up here is today's workout suggestion. We can review the workout. It's telling me here I need to do just a pretty easy ride today as the suggested workout. Not for me today. Okay, for a responsiveness test, I guess we go navigation. We go courses, saved courses, uh, remembrance drive course, okay. Look at the map of that. Now, I do have OpenStreetMaps loaded on that, so it may be a little slower on there. One thing of note is you have ability to grab and pinch zoom straight away on the 1030 Plus, and on here you have to go into zoom mode or scroll mode and then back out of that. So an update for that is it's easier to grab and pinch and navigate your way around a map. And I'll load the elevation profile at the same time, that one takes the cake. And we'll click on climbs for the climb pro info. 
Uh, it's not too bad on this one, but just the general usability feels a lot faster. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of lag there on this one here. So the live track start feature, once you've started a ride here with this unit, scroll down from the top across to the menu, start live track. Uh, do you want to select to say, of course, no. Bang, live track started already straight away. So email will come through with that or whatever you have set up for live track and you can stop live track on the fly. Super cool, I do love that feature. That is really handy. Okay, a quick beep test on the 1030 plus. The ride starts and 1030. A lot louder on this one here. And we stop and stop. Pretty easy to pick which one is which there. Now we're into the secret test menu. Not much to see here other than, oh, there is newer hardware in that, obviously. Screen burn-ins. And finally, a touchscreen test here on the secret hidden menus. Touchscreen, we will draw a llama. Okay, not much of a llama came out there. Same on here. There we go. Much more alarma on this side than, what the hell is that? But that just goes to show the responsiveness here is a lot better than the uh, previous version. And finally, a beep test that I can put up on the screen. So 4,000 hertz, I guess this will be. Versus. And there we go. A good visual representation of that unit being a lot louder. All right, obviously there's a lot more to these units. As I said earlier on, if you want anything tested or discussed in further detail, let me know in the uh, video notes below and we'll see you soon.